Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for your 284 BHS J Flight by Jayco. We're going to begin our orientation on the outside of the RV. We're going to begin at the front. The first thing we'll look to look at is your front pass-through storage compartment. You will notice this unit has the magnetic clasp. Very handy. I'm glad they're doing that with all models now. In your front storage compartment, you will find your manual crank for your electric tongue jack, manual crank for your stabilization jacks, as well as a large storage area. You'll see here one of four stabilization jacks. They're located at the four corners of the trailer. These are to be used to stabilize and never to level. You should have the unit fully leveled before engaging your jacks. You may need to have some blocking depending on the site where you're going to be camping. Uh, usually what uh, we find works the best are six by sixes. That way you have uh, plenty of height to snug up your stabilization jacks to the ground. So we continue around the front. The next thing we'll come to is your side marker light. You'll notice the extra wide body on the uh, side marker light. That is to house the pre-wiring for a side view camera. There is one in the same location on the off door side as well. So you can have side views both sides of the RV. And then there is an optional uh, camera housing for a review camera at the back of the RV as well. All three of these are uh, an option that you may purchase from us if you choose. As we come along to the front, we'll notice the battery storage compartment area, as well as your propane storage and crossover regulator. This uses a double 30-pound uh, bottle system, and it functions with the crossover regulator. And what that crossover regulator will do for you, if you start, as you see, with the handle pointing to this tank, it will draw from this tank until it drops below a predetermined amount of pressure. That amount of pressure is determined by the regulator and is not adjustable. Once this tank drops below that predetermined amount of pressure, it will cross over and automatically draw from this tank, regardless of where the handle is pointing. If you come in front of the propane storage area, you'll come and you will meet your new electric tongue jack the top of the tongue jack you can see this rubber stopper here once the stopper is removed you may utilize the manual crank that I showed you previously in the front storage compartment here you'll also find switching to retract or extend the tongue as well as lighting to help you load at night if I drop down here and look just below your propane storage on the door side, you will see your safety breakaway switch. The loop end of the breakaway switch is connected to the tow vehicle. In the event that you become separated from your RV, the pin will be pulled free of the housing, engaging the trailer brakes. It is worth mentioning that I have seen at a time or two where the breakaway cable gets stepped on or tugged or caught up in something and becomes partially free of comes partially free of the housing uh, engaging the trailer brakes but not fully uh, pulled out um, so you may not notice that the brakes are engaged so if your uh, trailer brakes are engaged and you don't believe that they should be come here and just make sure the pin is fully seated within the housing continue along the outside of the rv making brief mention of the uh, second side view camera as we open the off door side of the front storage compartment we'll notice your 30 amp power cord this is what you would plug into the campground power in order to provide electricity to your RV 
you see your 30 amp plug end here. Uh, we also provide you with a conversion block that will convert this plug end to a 15 amp plug end. That way you can connect your RV to the electrical system of your home. Now you may not be able to power all functions of the RV off that 15 amp circuit, but you should be able to power most things that you need. One of the main things that you will not be able to use will be the unit's air conditioning system. As we continue to make our way along the outside of the RV, we'll come to your outdoor shower, your black tank flush, and your city water connection. The black tank flush. To use this, you will connect it uh, to a water system via garden hose. Uh, before you turn on the water, it's important to note that the output for the black and gray water tanks should be connected to a septic system or a sewer system, as well as the black tank valve here should be fully open prior to turning on the water. You also make note of your gray water tank handle here. And while we're down here looking at the output and the valve handles for your black and uh, gray water systems, it is worth noting that often it is preferred to empty the black water first than the gray, as that provides you with an opportunity to drain this portion of the uh, system and clean it of any uh, black water uh, tank matter. As we stand back up, We'll take a look at your city water connection. Essentially, your city water connection uh, is connected via a garden hose to a water supply. Usually, that water supply will be at your home or at a campground or RV park. And once it's connected and the tap is turned on, it will then pressurize the water system of your RV, and you can use it the same way you would use the water system in your home. As we continue along the outside, the last thing we'll come to on the off door side is your cable or satellite TV input. This is the main input for the whole RV. You will find various outputs throughout and they're all fed from this location. As we have come fully around to the back of the RV, I want to make note of the ladder access to the roof. And, as I mentioned previously with the side marker lights, we have a pre-installed pre -installed, uh, body for a rear view camera. The wiring is all there and it's easy to install. Either we can do it or you could do it yourself. And you can purchase the system from us if you choose to do so. Uh, the way the system works, it is monitored via a head unit that can be used with the 12 volt system of your vehicle allowing you to monitor all sides of the RV while in transit or while stationary via a 12 volt receptacle inside the RV itself. Also on the rear of the RV, we have your 30 amp power connection point and outside access to your hot water tank. The two areas of uh, concern for most RV owners on the outside of your hot water tank would be the pressure relief valve and the drain plug or cap. Before removing your drain plug or cap, always make sure that you open the pressure relief valve. Next, we'll come around almost full circle to your door side. You'll see that we have a small rear kitchen here with sink as well as refrigerator. Always handy. Come back to the door of the RV and we'll note your awning and under your awning you have two speakers. Those speakers can be used in conjunction with the stereo inside the RV.
Also under your awning, we have the venting for your refrigerator. It's not uncommon to see people lean stuff up against the side of their RV, which is not a good idea for damage reasons, but also in the case of your refrigerator venting, it needs to remain obstruction free for proper functioning of the refrigerator. Directly below this, you'll see the uh, exhaust for your furnace. Now it does say that it is hot, but due to the location underneath the awning and the proximity to uh, more campers or people, I always like to make special mention of how hot this actually can be. Here we have the location of the fill point for your fresh water tank or your potable water tank. You would use the potable water tank or fresh water tank if you're going to be camping off grid somewhere where there isn't a fresh water supply or a water supply at all. Or if you're at campgrounds that do not supply potable water and you wish to have a source of potable water, water with you. In order to utilize the water in the fresh water tank, you'd use the onboard water pump. I will show you where that is in a little bit. Directly above your freshwater fill point, you will see that we have the venting or exhaust for your range hood. It is worth noting that while in transit, you should close, and while not in use, you should close this uh, range hood venting. But before you use it, there's these little tabs here that you should push up in order to open. One of the last things we're going to talk about on the outside of the trailer is this area here in which you'll find a mounting block, a cable output, and a 120 volt power source. This is meant to provide you with the ability to watch the television outside under your awning if you choose to do so. Before we go inside, I would like to mention the awning itself. While they are great at blocking the weather and rain, they are meant as a sunshade, not as a uh, weather protection. So in the event that there is any strong winds or a large amount of rainfall, it is always recommended that you bring your awning in fully in order to protect it. Let's step inside and see what we have. As usual, we have the fire extinguisher directly inside the door. I like this placement as it is easily accessible to anybody outside and to inside the RV. Also directly inside the door, we have the unit's carbon monoxide and propane detector or gas alarm. So you can see there's a green light and directly above that green light we have a button. That button is provided in order to allow you to test your uh, detection system. At the moment you'll see the green light that would indicate that it is functioning properly. Uh, it is recommended to test it every so often and when you do so you press this button. You would hear a series of loud beeps. The light would turn from green to red. Uh, and once uh, it was done doing the test, if everything was functioning properly, it will go back to a solid green light. It is worth mentioning that there are different items that can set this off that aren't necessarily uh, of concern. Uh, the most uh, notable one being uh, paint. Any painting in and around the sensor very well can set it off. As we stand up, we'll take a look at your indication panel. This is where you can find levels for your battery, fresh, black and gray water tanks, as well as switching for your water pump, water heater on gas and water heater on electric. In this area, you'll also find lights for the main area of the trailer, as well as your awning light. You also have switching to extend and retract your awning and extend and attract, retract your slide. As we turn, we'll go into your master bedroom or main bedroom. This main bedroom has an emergency exit. It's worth taking a minute to make sure you understand how it works. 
It is pretty simple. You push down on the black tab, push the red handle over and out, bringing it perpendicular to the wall of the RV. Push it free, fully free of the RV. Pull on the red tab, removing the screen, then you're able to escape to safety. Also on this area of the bedroom, we'll see a pre-wired location for your solar power system. This allows you uh, to, to fairly easily install a head unit in order to monitor uh, your solar system. Directly across from the bed, you will see that we have a wall-mounted bracket for a TV. It's easily removable and can be attached easily to the back of any TV. You would use the same bracket in order to watch uh, television outside underneath your awning. Again, we have supplied a supply of uh, cable or satellite and 120 volt power. As per usual, there is under bed storage and this particular one is supported with props. Earlier when talking about power connection and connecting to power, I had mentioned a conversion block from the 30 amp to 15. And here it is, the usual location inside the sink of the RV. Now as we continue to move around the main area of the RV, the next thing we're going to come to is your range top and stove. The very first thing you should do ever before lighting the uh, range top or cooktop is opening the glass and fully removing it from the cooking area. A uh, failure to do that will often result in the breakage of the glass. So now that it's open, in order to light, we'll turn to the light position, then turn your sparking knob. I don't have the gas turned on, so I uh, am not going to be able to light at the moment, but it's a uh, fairly simple light position, turn the sparking knob. The same can be said for all three top burners. The same is also true of your oven. The one difference is first, always make sure you open the appliance before attempting to light. Once it is open, you turn it to the light position, but then you have to press and hold the knob in while you're also turning the sparker. I'm unable to do that as I'm holding the camera with the other hand, but that would be the uh, the correct method for lighting your stove. Next door to your stove and uh, cooktop combo we have the unit's refrigerator. It offers a good size with a lot of storage. And has a functioning in either gas or an auto mode, meaning that in auto mode, if we have it set to auto mode, it will automatically detect between gas or electricity, always selecting electricity first if it's present. Also here, you will see the gas selection. If we turn it on to gas now, it will light only on gas in this, in this position. And usually when these gas appliances light, you will hear, you may hear the fridge is a little bit quieter, but you may hear uh, a ticking sound as it attempts to light three times. Uh, if it doesn't light in amount of, that amount of time, you will see these lights flashing. That would indicate that it was uh, unable to light properly. Uh, usually it's a problem of uh, gas supply. So often it's either the valves on your uh, propane bottles are not open, there you go, you'll see that it is flashing now, so it did not light. So turn that off. If that happens, go out, check out front to make sure the bottles are open. If they are, 
walk around for a, a little bit, do a couple other things, and then come back in. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of enough pressure built up to light to properly light the appliance. Uh, so sometimes just giving it a chance to uh, to fully uh, pressurize will help it light better. Next, we'll come to the television and uh, stereo area of the RV. You will see here that this stereo has two zones, two speaker zones. Zone one is inside the RV, and zone two is on the outside underneath the awning. Those speakers that I showed you earlier. As well as the two zones, the stereo also has HDMI, auxiliary, and Bluetooth connectability as well as USB charging capabilities. If you look up here, you will find your signal booster for your antenna. This is also your cable or satellite TV connection point. Uh, whereas the, the signal booster will help your uh, antenna TV viewing, it will impede uh, proper viewing of cable or satellite TV as it messes with the uh, signal from your provider. So if you're ever going to be uh, using cable or satellite, make sure the booster is off as it is now. When the green light is on, that indicates that the booster is active. We'll come full circle here and take a look at your bunks. In these bunks, on the bottom, you'll see that there is another Emergency exit here. This emergency exit functions exactly the same as the one in the bedroom out front. And as we pull back here, I'm going to have to ask you to bear with me. I'm going to show you the inside access for the hot water or for the water heater. All right, I think I'm here. You'll see they have easy access to the rear of the hot water tank. The of importance here are these two valves, right, one and two. At the moment, the valve handles are pointing in towards the hot water tank. That is indicating that the water is passing through the hot water tank, meaning that it is ready for normal use. If you were attempting to winterize your RV, you would want to switch it to bypass. In that instance, you would turn both valve handles so it's pointing in this direction, in line with the bypass plumbing both valve handles in that direction and then it would be safe to winterize your RV. Now there is nothing inherently wrong with winterizing your RV and passing all the antifreeze through your hot water tank. It's just a waste of antifreeze. Come out and we'll take a look at the bathroom. So the bathroom of the RV, pretty typical setup. I like the nice big shower area with the skylight. And as we take a look, you'll see the most important thing in this uh, bathroom, other than the toilet itself, is your GFCI plug, a receptacle. Uh, at the moment, I just pressed the test button, so it has tripped the GFCI. So right now, anything that's on the load side of, the, of this receptacle uh, will be non-functioning. So typically, what would be on the load side of the receptacle would be anything, uh, any plug or receptacle that is near water, so your counter plugs in the kitchen, and anything that is outside the RV. So all of your outside 120-volt uh, power. Uh, will not be functioning now that this has been tripped. In order to reset it, you press the top black reset, the reset button, the red light goes away, and now everything should be functioning properly. As we make our way out of the bathroom here, we'll turn and take a look at the thermostat for the RV. It operates with a capacitive touch button, meaning it's not mechanical. You don't have to uh, press it with any force, just a light touch. Uh, you continue to touch the power button or mode button to cycle through your various options. We have a fan, high, low, or auto. 
we have your cool and we have the furnace. Uh, once on the furnace or uh, air screens, you can switch it up and down via these side buttons to change the temperature. Uh, also worth noting, while you're in the, uh, the fan settings, if you have it set to high uh, and you want to use and you use the furnace, it will automatically use the fan for the air conditioning in order to achieve a high fan output. Uh, and that's fine. It's not, uh, it doesn't damage anything. However, it is loud. So if you're turning your furnace on and your AC is blowing air, it's not cold air, but it is blowing air and it is loud. Uh, you'll want to come over here and make sure your fan is set to the auto setting like it is now. Speaking of your air conditioning, I want to make a note that there are baffles on the inside portion of the air conditioner. With these baffles closed, it will force the majority of the air to the various ports located throughout the RV. However, with the baffles open, the majority of the air will fall directly into the main, main area here, which can be handy if you're cooking inside. It's a good way to keep it a little cooler in here without building up heat from the, from the cooktop or the oven. Also in this area, we have the load center. The load center is where you'll find the breakers for the RV and they'll function much like they would in your home as well as the fuses, very similar to what you might see in your vehicle. Uh, and in this case here, if the, there's something wrong with one of the circuits protecting a fuse, as you can see I wiggled there, I was, yeah, if you can see that, I was wiggling this one fuse and it uh, broke connection for a minute with the, uh, with the circuit board and it now I did pull that out a little bit so that would happen. You could see the red light that came on. So if there is something uh, uh, not functioning properly with the circuit, there could be a, there will be a, a red light that uh, LED light that comes on beside the fuse to indicate that there is an issue with that circuit. Now earlier we did mention your carbon monoxide propane detector. I always want to make sure we also mention your smoke detector. Now the smoke detector should have its batteries changed every six months or so. Usually that's the standard, at least here. Uh, and the standard advice is to change it during daylight savings time or when we have the time changes. Uh, it's an easy way to remember to do it. And it's also an easy way to remember to test your carbon dioxide propane detection system. If you do them both at the same time, when we have our time change, as long as we still have one, <laughs> then it should be easy to make sure that all of your safety equipment is functioning properly inside the RV. One of the last things I want to show you here is access to your water pump underneath your sink. Uh, previously I have removed this one screw, Red Robertson screw, in order to get access to the hot water tank, or actually your water pump, so excuse me for uh, misspeaking. Um, similar to your, uh, your water tank, you will notice that there is a valve handle here. At the moment, the valve handle is lined in line with the, the uh, feed line for your freshwater tank. This means that you will be drawing from the freshwater tank. If we were to change that valve direction to this, it's now pointing to the fill, fill tube. Uh, your fill tube uh, will allow you to draw water uh, from an antifreeze bucket when you attempt to uh, winterize your RV, if you choose to do so. Let's put that back in there. There are a lot of features in these RVs, 
If you have any questions that were not answered in this video whatsoever, which I'm sure some of you will have, feel free to give us a call and we'll do our best to make sure you get all the answers that you need. Thank you very much. Congratulations and enjoy your new RV.